Welcome to Tales from SYL Ranch, the BitChute channel where everyone is entitled to my opinion. And I'm Bill Stone. While I have your attention, I'd like to ask that if you like what I'm doing, please like this video, subscribe to my channel, hit the notification bell, share me on social media, and tell all of your friends, family, neighbors, pets, and livestock to do the same. I would appreciate your support via my PayPal tip jar, my subscribe star, my merch store on Teespring, or a place on my website where you can support me further. And there are links to all of these in my description box. Something smells decidedly like seafood in Portland, Oregon. Now, I'm inclined to do a show on the death of Portland act Antifa activist Sean D. Kaler. I'm holding off due to lack of data. Now, on the surface, it might appear that this is an escalation of the current cold civil war. However, that may not be the case at all. It may just be a totally unrelated incident of extremely bad luck for Kaler. Now, here are the facts as I understand them as of making this recording. Early Saturday morning, October 12, 2019, 23-year-old Sean D. Keeler was hit by an SUV near Cedar Riot, a popular hangout for Antifa. He was driven to the hospital by friends, where he died of blunt tra force trauma injuries consistent with being hit by a car. Portland police are investigating the incident as a homicide. Shots were fired at the vehicle. The vehicle crashed into a building near the Oregon Democratic Party headquarters, but not the headquarters itself, as has been reported in some circles. The driver of the vehicle fled. Portland Antifa are saying that it wasn't due to fascist activity. Sunday night, October 13th, Antifa vandalized the Oregon Democratic Party headquarters. Keeler appears to have been radicalized at an early age. He was known as 13 among the Antifa, as that's the age at which he began participating in their activities. Beyond those facts, I have questions that need to be answered prior to giving informed commentary on the matter. While I usually do go off on my politics and how it relates in some fashion, I try not to do that in absence of the facts. There are a lot of facts that no one seems to know. Now, to be clear, Nobody deserves to be run over, particularly at age 23. His family and friends, as always, have my sincerest condolences. My own children are a little older than Kaler was, but losing one of them at an early age is certainly my worst nightmare. I do not know how Kaler's family feels, and frankly, I try not to. And while it's trite, when I say it is always true, if they happen to be watching, if there is anything that I or my family can do to help you in this time, please don't hesitate to ask. Now that understood, there are questions that I need answers for before I can make any informed commentary. For example, why did the Antifa vandalize the Oregon State Democratic Party headquarters? Who did the shooting? Was the vehicle fired on prior to or after the hit and run. One must wonder if the Antifa were shooting at the car prior to the hit and run and the driver reacted out of panic. How are the Antifa sure that it wasn't to what they broadly call fascist activity? Disavowing fascist activity is very odd for the Antifa. They're quick to label almost anyone as a fascist. One has to wonder if perhaps they knew the driver. The Antifa have no qualms about doxing. Why did they take no pictures of the SUV, its license plate, and other identifying characteristics? Why have they not used this information to dox the driver? The Antifa themselves have refused to cooperate with Portland police and are urging others to similarly not cooperate. Now, the Antifa claim that this is because they hate police, though in far more derogatory terms than that. I'm inclined to believe them. However, lack of even the most meager co cooperation hinders the arrest and conviction of a person who killed one of their own. Now, perhaps the driver was an Antifa member that the Antifa are now harboring. It would certainly explain why they're certain it wasn't related to fascist activity and why they're refusing to cooperate with the police. But if there's not someone that they're harboring, then one must wonder if the Antifa aren't pursuing their own brand of vigilante justice. Perhaps they've already killed the driver, and they aren't cooperating with the police because of that. Now also, if the vehicle was abandoned, 
Surely it had license plates and registration that should lead the police to an obvious first suspect, the driver. Then why have there been no suspects nor arrests made, at least at the time of this recording? Something smells decidedly like seafood. Now, I assume that the Portland police must be investigating these questions. I have even attempted to contact the reporter on the Oregonian, which is a local newspaper, who has been assigned to the story and suggesting that he ask precisely these questions. But until such time as these questions are answered, it is inappropriate for anyone to offer commentary on it. And I advise everyone to not listen to anyone presently commenting on it. There are simply too few facts to make any kind of informed commentary. Now I caution my viewers, this is not automatically assume that this is an escalation of the Cold Civil War. It might be, but then again, it might just be a tragic accident. But it sure smells like seafood to me. And that's all that I have to say about that. I would love to keep the conversation going, so please leave your comments, questions, and nasty remarks, and I'll do my best to respond to you. So thanks for watching. That's all the time that we have today for this episode of the highly acclaimed, world-renowned Tales from SYO Ranch, the BitChute channel where everyone is entitled to my opinion. And I'm Bill Stone. Ultimate power in this world has always been one simple thing, the control and manipulation of minds.